Okay, moving into one of my favorite parts of pre-calculus, and that's because we are actually about to do calculus. Uh, evaluating limits graphically, uh, and this is where we usually cue mean girls, and everybody starts saying, the limit does not exist! The limit does not exist! Um, having actually never seen mean girls, I looked it up on YouTube a minute ago, and um, that was the correct answer. That limit did not exist. I had to check it because I'm a math nerd. Um, all right, so limits. What do limits do? What they do is, um, and that sounded like funny, what they do, we need to sit Indian style and listen to this story about limits. Uh, they look at a function's or a graph's behavior as you get close to a particular x-coordinate. Now that's very vague. If you don't understand limits to begin with, that sentence doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, so we'll come back and visit that in a second. But that's essentially what a limit does. Uh, and how you read a limit, this is the limit of f of x as x approaches c. You can read it. Um, a couple of different ways. That was one of them, the limit of f as x approaches c, or the limit as x approaches c of f of x. Uh, so that's how you would read it. Um, and what we're trying to find with the limit, if we're doing the limit as x approaches c of f of x, um, the x-coordinate, we're going to follow the graph like we follow a map, and we follow the graph as the x-coordinate gets close to whatever that value is. Uh, and as we do that, we want to see what the y-coordinates of the graph are getting close to. Uh, now for a limit like this, where x is approaching c, you have to look at both sides. And uh, as my x's on both sides get from the left and the right get close to that x-coordinate, we want to know exactly how high the graph is, what is the y-coordinate. Um, and the best way to do this, uh, I've given you a few definitions, but the best way to do this is to actually look at some limit examples. Uh, and so here's one where we have some function f of x. Um, I didn't label it in the graph. I probably should have. This is f of x. And I want to know what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. So what I'll do, and the way I visualize this, is I drop a vertical line going down through negative 1. That's where x equals negative 1. That's a lot wider than I wanted it to be. Let's just go with this. There's x equals negative 1. Now, my graph is a little bit crooked, and so it's not. Ah, uh, seriously, come on. Come on, just sit on the fear fragger. All right. Here, I'll fix this. Oh, no, still not doing it. Ah, oh, stinky fizzle tooth. All right, well, whatever. There is my vertical line um, at x equals negative 1. And what I do is I follow the graph from both sides. So I'm going to follow from the left side. Let's see, let's go there. I'm going to follow from the left side, and as I come from the left, and as I come from the right, both of them are going to this place. The graph is going towards that point, and that y-coordinate is 1, 2, 3. So this limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x is 3, because that's where both sides were going. The left side and the right side collide at a y-coordinate of 3. So that's your answer to number 1. Left side, right side. As you get close to that vertical line at x equals negative 1, we're coming in at a y-coordinate of 3. Uh, for the second one, we're now looking at x approaching 0. So I would move my vertical line over to 0, and I want to see what's happening at 0. Well, the left side, oh, whoops, the left side, and the right side, this time they meet again, and if the two sides meet, if they go to the same place, then that y-coordinate, in this case 2, is the answer to the limit. Um, so there we go, that's how we do limits. You follow left, you follow the right, and whatever y-coordinate they go to is the answer to the limit. Now let's try this one. Uh, x approaches negative 2. Again, I like to visualize a vertical line at negative 2, right about there. And as I get close to negative 2, my left and right sides, they do meet. We actually go straight through that point. So left and right sides, they do meet, and that is at a y-coordinate of 2. Um, and then the next one says what's happening as x approaches 3. So again, I visualize a vertical line going through x equals 3. <laughs> x is approaching 3. And I visualize from the left and from the right, and left and right sides are both going down to this same point, and that point is at a y-coordinate of negative 1. So there are a couple of limits um, for this graph. Let's see, just look at left and right sides. If the left and right sides go to the same place, then that's the answer to the limit. Um, now problems like this is where we start to get angry. Um, 
because people, when there's holes in the graph or when there's asymptotes or jumps or something goofy, we tend to get a little bit more confused with limits. So let's look at number one here. X is approaching negative two. And as X is approaching negative two, I'm going to visualize that vertical line at negative two. So there's negative two. And I'm going to look at the left and the right sides. Now this one, what a lot of people think is this is the infamous limit does not exist. There's a hole there. Um, but if you look at the left and right sides, my left side is going towards that hole. My right side is going towards that hole. And left and right sides are actually going to the same place. Now, the weird thing is they never actually get to that Y coordinate, but that's okay. Even though there is a hole there, we do say that the limit does exist. And both sides of this limit are approaching that Y coordinate of three. They're both going to the hole and that hole is at y equals three. Hopefully that is not too loud on the, those announcements aren't too loud. Uh, let's see, uh, let's do this one real quick and then I'll pause the video for the announcements to end. Um, as we approach three, this is x equals three. I'll look at the left side and the right side. They are still going to that same place. There's a hole there, but both sides are going to that hole and the hole occurs at negative two. So um, there is a limit in the case of a hole. The presence of a hole does not affect the limit. Um, as long as both sides are going to that one location, then the limit still exists, and that answer is whatever the y-coordinate is for the hole. All right, so let's move on and look at another example, um, keeping in mind that holes do not necessarily affect um, what the value of the limit is. So uh, let's look at number one here. The limit as x approaches negative two. So now I'm going to visualize a vertical line at negative two. There we go. And for the limit, I want to know what's happening as I get close to negative an x coordinate of negative two from both sides. Uh, now this is another one that bugs people because the left and the right sides are both going to this hole, but then you have this other point sitting up here at a y coordinate of two. Um, this point does not affect the limit. All the limit cares about is what's happening left side and what's happening right side. Um, and what's happening on the left and the right is they're both going to that hole, and that hole is at a y coordinate of negative 3. Um, and so even though there is a redefined point up here, that doesn't affect the limit. The limit is still negative 3 because both sides are going towards the hole at negative 3. Um, for number two here, the limit as x approaches two, let's see here. Uh, I'll drop a vertical line through two, that's right here. Um, and if I look at this one as I approach from left and from right, left side's going up here, right side's coming down here. This one, left and right sides do not go to the same place. The left is way up here, the right is way down here. They do not meet. If left and right sides don't meet, this limit does not exist. So here is your mean girl's Q. The limit the li does not limit. The limit does not exist. Now we will not write the phrase does not exist. There is an abbreviation for that that is endorsed by the Math League of America. We will say DNE. Limit does not exist. Um, so keep in mind with limits, left and right sides must go to the same place for the limit to exist. And if they do go to the same place, that's the value of the limit, regardless of this extra point. The point here, this ordered pair, this point does not affect the limit. Oh, geez, is that affect or effect? I think it's affect. Is that right? Affect. The point does not affect, I don't know, affect, effect, whatever. That point does not affect the limit. All that affects the limit is what's happening on left and right sides. Um, so there are limits as we're coming from both sides. There is also a limit called a one-sided limit. And for one-sided limits, you only care about either the left or the right side. And the way you denote left or right side is you put a little plus sign or a little minus sign a positive or negative, above the number, like a little exponent. Um, and you read that as, for this one, x is approaching c from the right. And that's what tells you we're coming from the right. Uh, if it is a negative, x approaches c. That is read the limit as x approaches c from the left. 
uh, if both the right and the left go to the same place. And that's what I'm saying down here. If the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit are equal to each other, then that's what the overall limit from both sides equals. Um, so let's look at a few one-sided limits. Um, here we go. And ignore the numbers. I copied these out of another book. Uh, so let's look at part A. It says the limit to exponent is 3 from the left. So we're only looking at the left side of 3. Well, the left side of 3 is right here. So I'm only looking over here from the left side. I don't care what's happening on the right side. Uh, so the left side is I follow my graph from the left. So I follow from the left. As I get close to 3, I'm getting close to this hole. The left side is approaching that hole, and that hole is at a y-coordinate of 3. So the left-hand limit is equal to 3. Now the right-hand limit, as I highlight the right side of 3, as I come from the right, my right side's coming in down here. Follow the graph from the right, from the right, and we're going to this hole to this hole. Now that hole is at a y-coordinate of negative 2 and that's what the right side of this limit is approaching. Um, and so then the question on part C is what is the limit as x approaches 3? Well if I don't specify a side, if it's only 3 and there's not that positive or negative, then that means we've got to look at both sides. And we actually just worked out both sides. I got 3 and negative 2. Those are not the same. The left side and the right side do not agree. Um, that's how you say that. They don't agree. Therefore, the answer to part E is does not exist. Okay, and then I like D. I wanted to look at this one. Um, because this one is not a limit. This is simply f of 3. And what f of 3 is saying, and we tend to forget this because we've been thinking about limits, um, when x is equal to 3. This is equal to, we're not approaching 3, we're actually there. So when I'm at 3, um, what is the y-coordinate? My writing is absolute crap there. So what is the y-coordinate as x, or when x is 3? What can I write? W-H-A-T, there. Um, and it's, I didn't make this point very bold, but here is a point right here. There is actually an ordered pair right there, and that ordered pair is 3, 1. When I am actually at x equals 3, I have a point at 1. So f of 3 is 1. That's where the point is. But the limit, if you look at left and right sides, those are different. Um, so f of 3 is different than the limit as you approach 3. You, you interpret that and you, you answer that question different, differently. Um, let's look at number 40 here. Uh, as we approach negative 4. So let's drop my negative 4 in here. I'd like to drop that vertical line. There we go. So we're approaching negative 4. And first we're coming from the left. So let's look at the left-hand side. Okay, well, if I look from the left, that means I'm ignoring the right side. Coming from the left, my graph comes down. Then as I get close, I'm coming up to that hole. And that hole is at a y-coordinate of... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my left side is approaching 5. The right side, if I look at the right side of negative 4, my right side is down here, and my right side is going towards this y-coordinate of 2. So left side is going to 5, the right side is going to 2, and that means the limit as x approaches 4, this is from both sides, from both sides because it didn't specify one side or the other so we look at both sides the sides do not meet the two sides have to crash they have to collide at some point and these don't they completely miss so this limit does not exist so there are the limit answers let's look at g of negative four and g of negative four means where is the point actually filled in where do we actually have a point at negative four so if i look at this vertical line this dotted line at negative four there's actually a point right here and that is at a y-coordinate of 2. So that's where the filled-in point is for g of negative 4. I think I have maybe two more. So let's move on. Uh, let's look at this problem. Um, the limit as h, now don't worry about the letter. Um, they no notice on these they're renaming the axis. This is the h-axis. So as h approaches 0, and this is from the left, so h approaches 0 from the left, here's 0. 
I'm going to drop a vertical line through zero. And when I get close to zero from the left, when I get close to zero from the left side, it's going down here towards this point, and that point is a y-coordinate of negative 4. And then I need to look at the right side. Um, the right side is... see coming down coming down coming down it actually goes to the same place the right side also goes down to negative four well since left and right sides were the same that means both sides the limit as we approach from both sides is also negative four so since these two are equal then we know that the answer as we approach zero is also going to be the same if these two answers were different if left and right were different then part c would not exist Okay, then we have f of 0, and f of 0 means where is my graph when I'm looking at 0. And even though they didn't put a big bold point, this graph goes straight through x equals 0 down here, and it also is negative 4. So we have a whole bunch of negative 4s for number 41. Then we have one more problem. Let's see, let's look at this one. Uh, the limit is x approaches 2 from the left, right, and both sides, so I'm worried about x equals 2. So here's 2. And let's see. The limit is x approaches 2 from the left. Let's follow from the left side. So coming from the left, from the left, I'm coming down here. x approaches 2 from the left. And that is approaching the hole at positive 1. So left side is approaching 1. Right side, coming in from the right, it also is approaching that hole. So the right side is approaching 1. Um, so looking at left and right sides, they're both going to the hole. That hole is at a y-coordinate of 1. Then the limit as x approaches 2, we need to look at both sides. Now this is the one, this is another problem where people get confused. Uh, the limit as x approaches 2 is dependent on the left and the right sides. Since both left and right sides are equal to 1, then that is what the limit as x approaches 2 is. If left and right sides agree, then that's the answer to the overall limit from both sides. So um, even though there's a hole there, the limit still exists. Both sides do go to the hole, so the, the limit approaches 1. Um, and people get confused because we have this big, bold point redefined up here. Uh, this point does not affect the limit, and we had a problem like this earlier um, right here. A floating point up here does not affect the limit. All that affects the limit is the left hand and the right hand side. So on this one, um, the limit is still going to be 1. But g of 2, that's when you look at the point. g of 2 is saying what's happening at x equals 2. And at x equals 2, we have a point up there at a y-coordinate of 3. So that's going to be your, what the point tells you. The point tells you g of 2. It does not tell you the limit as you approach 2. Um, and that is the last one. So there is a crash course on limits with graphs. Got a little bit long. Sorry about that. Um, so there we go.